Well, this piece of shit definitely didn't put a smile on my face. Joker Folie Adieu. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but this movie's so bad I couldn't give less of a shit. Now, what I did not expect about this movie is that it is getting trashed on the internet. Critics hate it, audiences hate it, everybody hates it. At the time of this recording, on Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score is at 32% and the audience score is at 31 There's a larger gap in the Madam Web audience score. Yeah, this has a lower audience score than Madam Web. Madam Web, I think, was at like 57%. Or something like that. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Point is, I was expecting everybody to gush over this movie like they did the first one. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I did not like the first movie. I thought it was pretentious. I thought it was stupid. And it was such a poor adaptation of the character. And it made some really dumb decisions. Especially in the adaptation department. Like him having some weird connection to the Wayne family. Or... I guess not really a connection, but think he thinks he does. Uh, it's hard to remember exactly what they were going for there. Like, I think the idea was that he thought, uh, was his, what's Bruce's father's name? Uh, that Mr. Wayne was his father. I think that's what that was supposed to be. Uh, I don't remember. I saw the first movie years ago. But, and then also, like, him becoming Joker... While Batman is still a kid, I didn't understand that whatsoever. Oh, it's Thomas Wayne. There we go. Thomas Wayne. That's Bruce's father's name. But either way, but just, I didn't like the first movie. Let's put it that way. It's not the worst DC film. Like, not by a mile. But I didn't like it. I just personally couldn't stand it. This one, I figured, would be just as bad. But... I could not have guessed it would be this much worse. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? And that, yes, this is a jukebox musical. And it's a really fucking bad one. Now, when I say that, I don't mean the songs are bad. In fact, if I were to listen to the songs on their own, they'd probably be fine. My issue is that this is such a poorly put-together musical that it's insane. Okay, so... What, what do you, so if you've seen musicals, you probably know that the point of the music is to give us some introspection into the characters and help progress the story. It does the opposite in this film, because all of the musical numbers, not only are they, are about 70% of them just fantasies in Arthur's head, like, literally, like, he doesn't, like, some of them he sings in the real world, but a lot of them are, like, fantasy sequences, and even when the ones are in the real world, whether they are or not, they grind the movie to a halt anytime someone starts singing. Like, this movie isn't very interesting. Like, the plot is almost non-existent. But whenever the songs appear, the movie grinds to a screeching halt for three minutes so that these people can sing. And I looked it up how, how, much, how long the soundtrack is. All of the songs put together take up 41 minutes of this movie. That explains why the movie's runtime is 2 hours and 18 minutes. Plus there's like 15 minutes of credits or something. I don't know. I left as soon as the credits started rolling. I almost like bolted when the, cre when the credits started rolling because I was fucking done with this. So I guess I should actually talk about the plot as well, but there really is no plot. It's him being, the majority of the plot is him being on trial for his murders and a kind of romance with Harley Quinn or Harley Quinn. This is not fucking Harley Quinn and not just in the character's writing. They only, I think the word Harley is only mentioned once and it's like near the end. For the majority of the film, they just, they call her Lee. Really? Now, something interesting happens at the end of this movie, and yes, I am going to spoil some elements because, honestly, no one should watch this. So, but at the very end of the movie, he's killed by someone who likes, who liked his Joker, because he renounces the Joker persona during the final trial and admits guilt of the murder, 
of all of the murders. Then he's there, the courthouse, something outside the courthouse explodes. I think I saw online somewhere it was supposed to be a car bomb. It's never, it doesn't actually explain. It's just an explosion. Blows up the courthouse, part of the courthouse, and a couple of his followers help him get away, turning Harvey Dent, who's in this, and he's the, he represents, because the case is the people of New York, of, not New York, of, uh, actually I think they might have called it New York City by accident even though it's supposed to be Gotham City. But either way, versus Arthur Fleck, he's representing against Arthur Fleck, obviously. And he, of course, kind of becomes Two-Face. You see him, after the explosion, you see him, the one half of his face is scarred. It doesn't really look like two It really just looks like some scars on his face. It doesn't really look like... A, like, remember what... Aaron Eckhart's version in The Dark Knight looked like where his face was basically a skeleton at that point. Hell, even the Gotham Knights one looked better. You are literally making me praise Gotham Knights for something? That's how bad this movie is. Also, the guy who plays uh, Harvey Dent, he pulled the same crap that a lot of Star Wars actors do, where he refused to watch any other rendition of the character. I'm getting really sick of actors pulling this shit because it's a publicity stunt. They said, because remember what happened with Obi-Wan Kenobi with the Grand Inquisitor and the Fifth Brother? If you don't, they, they, <clears throat> they touted that they had never watched a single episode of Rebels because they didn't want that, they didn't want those characters, like how they're portrayed in that show, to affect how they played the character. Now, first of all, Rebels was the first place that Grand Inquisitor and Fifth Brother, and as far as the on-screen goes, the only place they'd ever showed up. So they really should have to show see what the characters were like. And it showed in the performances in Obi-Wan Kenobi, they had no fucking clue what these characters were like. Grand Inquisitor was not intimidating, and it doesn't help with the writing that it was just completely wrong at the character. I've complained about Obi-Wan Kenobi enough. But then there was, like, Fifth Brother, where he made this stupid, evil, raspy voice that, the mo like, the most stereotypical evil voice you can come up with, which is not at all what the Fifth Brother sounded like, and he doesn't look right, he's, like, a foot shorter, and it's, okay, I bitched about Obi-Wan Kenobi enough, you get my point. So, and again, the guy's acting isn't bad here, but I'm getting really, really sick of people touting, hell, even when I looked this movie up on Wikipedia, because I wanted to see, like, some of the... Uh, background elements, by the way. This movie's budget was roughly $200 million. How much did they pay Lady Gaga to be in this movie? And I'm Actually, you know what? I'm assuming a lot of that budget went to getting the rights for these songs. So this movie's going to be a gigantic flop because no one wants to see this, even especially fans of the first movie, because they basically told them to fuck off. Because that worked so well with franchises like Star Wars... Didn't think I'd be referencing Star Wars this much while talking about Joker 2, but I digress. And it made $20 million in its first day, which means it's probably not going to even come close to breaking even, especially when word of mouth is going to be this bad. So, yeah. But getting back to what I was talking about earlier, he's broken out, out by a couple of his followers, and since he renounced the Joker persona, Harley leaves again, making this story entirely pointless, and then he's killed by a fellow inmate who uh, basically becomes the new Joker from the looks of it. Which means these two movies were an entire fucking waste of time. Because that means these were not Joker films, these were, like, prequels to who the real Joker would be who shows up for all of two minutes at the end of the second movie. So, we've gotten several interpretations of Joker. We've gotten many interpretations of Joker. We've gotten some good ones, like Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger. We've gotten some pretty bad ones, like Jared Leto. And there's probably some other ones out there that are pretty bad, but Jared Leto's the one that usually comes to mind. The one from Gotham wasn't too bad. I'm curious... If they're going to use Barry Key again in the Batman Part 2. Because I keep hearing conflicting reports about what that movie's going to be about. 
and he had a cameo at the end of the first movie, obviously, and from the little bit of time he was on screen, he did okay. But I'm curious if they're going to use him in that. Am I looking forward to the Batman Part 2? Not especially. Again, that was another movie that I'm just like, eh, it was fine. But, I, I did, like, again, it wasn't a bad movie. That one, I think, was another one, just like Joker, that I'm like, it's fine, but, oh, but it's a bit overrated. If the Batman Part 2 is anything like this, oh, they're in for, DC's in for some rough patches, because... Next year, they, we also get the re, the, basically the, next year we get the rebirth of the DC Extended Universe, or they're, I guess they're just calling it the DCU now, with Superman. I, that movie looks like it, cause considering how many characters they're shoving into the first movie, it's clear DC didn't learn their fucking lesson, and it looks like it's going to be a cluttered mess. So, DC is still just trudging behind Marvel, and the MCU, well, they have that Agatha show, which I've heard conflicting things about. I've heard some people say it's fine. Some people said it's complete trash. Honestly, I, I'm, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen any of it yet. I'll probably think it's somewhere in the middle. I'll probably think it's bad, but not terrible. And honestly, I'm looking forward to Venom and Craven the Hunter that comes out later this year. I was never looking forward to this movie. And again, it astonishes me just how badly how badly they screwed this up. I already didn't like the idea of this being a musical. It was stupid. But the simple fact that they could not get the musical portion of this movie right, like, even at all, is embarrassing. I guess the acting is okay. Like, a Joaquin Phoenix is still good. Gaga's acting is fine. There's some other actors in here that, like, like Catherine Keener and Steve Coogan reuniting from The Lightning Thief as they played Sally Jackson and Hades in that film. I honestly don't remember who Steve Coogan played in this. Jacob Laughlin is in this movie. He plays an inmate that's a friend of Arthur. And if you don't recognize the name, I can't say I blame you, but he was Eris in the Maze Runner sequel. So again, it was just another actor I recognized. But there's nothing to latch on to this film. Don't see this film, especially since they told pe basically told people to not watch the film. Do what they say. Don't watch the movie. I'm giving this an F. This is a fully a deuce. This is a full... Uh, no, I was going to try to make that pun a little more clever, and it ended up being even worse. So, yeah, that's all I got, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.